Uh, hello, Dean Lucas with Credo here. Thanks for joining me on my 50 States in 50 Days series. Today we're on day 46, and so we're going to talk about the 46th state admitted to the Union, and that is Oklahoma. And Oklahoma was the first state to be admitted to the Union in the 20th century. It was admitted on November 16th, 1907. So it's 11 years after, um, after Utah, um, which was the last state admitted in the 19th century. So now we're in 1907, you know, um, probably getting a little more selective, maybe about uh, statehoods. And uh, now we're getting ready to go into World War I. So it's getting, uh, you know, just a little bit of history there to kind of kind of see what was going on uh, during the time. I remember, you know, in the late uh, 19th century, we had the uh, Spanish-American War, we had the Alamo going on and stuff in Texas and everything. So, you know, things starting to brew up uh, globally now, right? And U.S. is starting to become more of a superpower right globally and so but maybe, maybe uh not wanting to be <laughs> but uh kind of defaulting into a global superpower now right so anyway just an interesting kind of time in history for for a state to become a state and then i think that's uh, makes oklahoma kind of unique um in any case um oklahoma has a lot of tax credits and incentives um and it is fairly complex so i don't uh uh, I do feel a little bit bad for tax professionals in Oklahoma because they have a lot to navigate as far as these state incentives and, and credits. Um, but on the other hand, it's good for you because uh, there's a lot of opportunities for you to get cash rebates and tax credits and, you know, maybe turn Oklahoma really into kind of a tax-free state. There's lots of opportunities for you to do that. Um, they have separated their program, I would say, into kind of two different areas where a lot of states I'll see they either focus heavily on making it very attractive for businesses, either ones that are in the state already or to attract um, other states to come to Oklahoma or to their state. And then other states are more focused on helping the companies that are already there. Um, and, you know, that's uh, whether that's good or not is, uh, you know, it's sort of an opinion. But Oklahoma actually does both. I would say, because they do both strongly. A lot, of, a lot of states will do both of them, but kind of really focus on one. I would say Oklahoma does both of them very strongly um, and really puts it out there to uh, really really make, you know, Oklahoma an attractive place to, to do business and to work, right? And, and to and create jobs, right? So anyway, I applaud them for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk first about sort of the incentives that are more kind of under business support. Uh, but then we can't leave it at that. I'm going to have to go into more uh, kind of niche credits and things that are affecting uh, a lot of individuals. Um, you know, there's a lot of credits that are kind of targeted more at really low income individuals, you know, that are probably household income of maybe 30000 or less per year. Um, that's not really the scope of these videos. I'm going to be talking more about credits that uh, would be more applicable to High income earners, uh, self-employed, um, small to mid-sized businesses, that type of thing, privately held businesses. But we would be remiss to not look at both types of credits, the ones that are made for incentivizing uh, commerce and then ones that are rewarding people in the state for different activities, okay, as part of public policy. All right, so without further ado, let's talk about these incentives first. Um, so, first area that they have in Oklahoma is the quality jobs programs, um, and they have really four major areas. One is the 10-year cash incentive, they have the 21st century quality job program, they have the small employer quality jobs program, and they have the quality jobs plus investment tax credit program. What you kind of need to know in this is that if you're adding jobs in Oklahoma, they're going to give you various incentives based on the size of your company, how many you're adding, the number of weight, uh, the uh, average wage that you're paying these people in these new jobs. And they've kind of, I think, covered a lot of bases with these different programs underneath this umbrella. And then if you're a manufacturing company, they have something specific for you, uh, which has to do with, you know, if you're adding equipment, fixed assets, things like that. If you're in manufacturing, you know that this is just part of it. And if you're adding jobs on top of that, which a lot of times they go hand in hand, they have some specialized credits for you. 
So, you know, if you're in, bottom line is in this program, if you're in Oklahoma and you're adding jobs, you need to be looking at these because you might qualify for one or more than one. And these cash rebates that they're giving you are over long periods of time. And it is very lucrative. You can stack up a big pile of money in getting these credits, whether it be on payroll or on corporate income tax credits or b &O tax, things like that, okay? Um, they also have incentives for investments, okay? So they have something called, they have two different uh, areas underneath this. And one is the investment slash new jobs package. The other is the business expansion incentive program. So uh, the new jobs package is really for manufacturers and they're gonna give you a pretty significant tax credit um, based on the investment in depreciable property and the addition of full-time equivalent employees involved in manufacturing, processing, or aircraft maintenance. Okay, there's a lot of private uh, aircraft uh, type activity goes on in Oklahoma, okay? Big oil industry in Oklahoma, okay? Big oil, big mining, a lot of not great natural resources in Oklahoma, okay? Um, the other part is a business expansion incentive program. This is for job creation and business expansion in facilities, machinery, and equipment, right? So if you're in an industrial type industry and you're not getting Oklahoma tax credits, can pretty much guarantee you're missing out on some of these, okay? Um, another area is the workforce tax credits, all right? And they have several different areas here. They've got the aerospace industry engineer workforce tax credit. They have the automotive engineer workforce tax credit. They have the software and cybersecurity workforce tax credit. And okay, those are the three areas, sorry, three areas. Uh, let's see, so if you're in the aerospace industry and you are employing engineers, you don't wanna look at this, this is huge credits, wow. I mean, and they give you tuition reimbursements and stuff, so if you're employing uh, people in that industry, you need to be looking at this, they have several different benefits and incentives there. If you're in the automotive industry, let's see, again, Huge tax credit, I mean, up to 10% of compensation paid to the engineers, plus an additional tax credit of 50% of tuition cost reimbursed to an employee. Wow. And then it says, additionally, the engineer hired receives a tax credit 5,000 per year. So the person you're employing receives a big tax credit. I mean, you guys can eliminate their uh, entire tax liability for Oklahoma through this program. Um, and that goes the same for the aerospace industry. Very, very similar credit, right? So if you're in automotive or aerospace, then you need to be looking at these credits. Um, last part is the software. Cybersecurity is a little bit different, but uh, people that are employees in this industry and you've received a degree from an accredited institution, so a bachelor degree, I'm assuming, might be associate, not sure, I have to look into that. You can get a credit of up to 2200 annually or 1800 annually for qualifying employees who are awarded a certificate from a technology center. So it sounds like 2200 if you have more of a traditional type degree, 1800 if you go to kind of a local school for some, uh, you, know, you know, just vocational training. But either way, if you're in that industry, you know, these are things that you should really have your HR department be looking at, I would think, or they can call us or, um, or call a firm like us to get more information on and flow that through to the employees is a huge benefit huge way to get big props and big rapport with your people um, without it costing you any money. Okay, it's just kind of facilitating this for them. All right, uh, a couple other things that are uh, in Oklahoma. Um, let's see, they have got, they have different um, tax credits if you hire some Native Americans or their spouses, right? Because there's a lot, of, a lot of land that has Native American heritage in um, in Oklahoma, and if you are hiring anybody that would be, uh, you know, Native American, I don't know how they define that exactly. Um, but anyway, they have tax credits of up to four thousand dollars per person. Okay, in that area. So, if you are hiring anybody that would, um, I guess, class themselves as Native American, then you can get a nice tax credit there. So keep that in mind. And then the last one in this area that I'm going to talk about is the manufacturing sales tax exemption and again if you're in manufacturing they have a flood of credits and incentives for you to take advantage of in oklahoma um, and you can get a you can get a manufacturer sales tax exemption permit they, they title it msep um, 
and, and it's a comprehensive sales tax exemption. So, you know, it covers the purchase of machinery and equipment, energy, tangible, personal property, um, things you're using for development and, and things that you're using in the manufacturing process. So, you know, that could be hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not more, um, that you're exempt from. And if you're not getting that, you need to be able to get that. Okay. Uh, let's see a few other things they have is five-year ad valorem tax exemption that's kind of like on personal property again manufacturing benefits they have a free port inventory benefit if you're if you if you're in a business where you're holding inventory you should be familiar with that most people get that pretty quickly i'd be surprised if you didn't have that and you qualified for it um they have uh, credits for customized employee training so if you're this is not necessarily uh, unusual for a state i know we have uh, where i live in in georgia they have what they call a retraining credit which is a pretty neat credit for just training your, your people and keeping them, you know, either increasing their job skills or keeping them up with competition. So they're giving some incentives there. Um, let's see. They are, they also give grants for companies wanting to relocate to Oklahoma. Um, grants is, is just, you know, money, um, not credits or anything like that. So you don't really have to do anything. You can get that just incentives, subsidies, whatever to, to get into the state. Um, let's see, they have some foreign, foreign trade zones that give you tax, tax benefits uh, uh, for you know, a certain international business you might be doing. Uh, let's see, they have a new market tax credit, which is sort of like you know, certain areas they've designated geographically that they're trying to take from poverty to prosperity. They're going to give you some incentives to do business in those areas. Um, that really kind of covers it. I mean, I, I would say if you are in Oklahoma, if you're in manufacturing, you definitely have to take a deep dive into this um, and, and find out what you're not getting. OK, and then certainly double check and make sure you're getting everything that you should be getting. If you are employing people, um, which most businesses are, but certainly if you're employing people and you're in the aerospace, automotive or tech slash cybersecurity slash software industry, there are benefits that your employees should be getting that, that if they're not getting them, check with your HR department, check with your payroll company, check with your bookkeeper, whoever is helping you with that, and uh, make sure that they're getting that benefit because that's, fr that's a free benefit and almost like a free pay raise for these people um, from you that costs you nothing. It's just knowledge and, and having some, some, uh, some know-how and just going that extra mile to do that for them. Okay. So that, that's really kind of the area of, I would say, that are sort of incentives that are targeted mostly at making it very attractive to domicile in Oklahoma and do business in Oklahoma. So I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go to credits and stuff that are a little more granular that are sort of, I would say, more underneath the umbrella of... Um, incentivizing behavior, furthering public policy, things like that. Because, you know, the tax code is used a lot of times to further public policy and incentivize different types of behaviors, right, uh, under the whole guise of <laughs> we're not going to assume that everybody's going to do the right things and we're not going to assume that everybody's a great businessman or businesswoman and we're going to provide incentives for uh, building prosperity in our state, right? So quite simple in that, in that way. Okay, so... Um, Gosh, there are so many in here that I am not going to be able to go into these in detail. Um, I am going to walk through these for you in different areas and give you an idea of maybe areas you're missing credits or areas that you could be looking at getting credits in that you haven't. Okay, And then if you have questions about these, you can send us an email, send us a note, call us, uh, put a comment in the video. And just, you know, we, we'll look up specific things for you um, based on a case-by-case -case basis. But I'm going to run through this really quickly just to try to build as much awareness as I can uh, on these different incentives and credits. Okay. So, oh, and the, the guide that they have for these credits is 60 pages long and it's not big print. Okay. So uh, that that's otherwise we would be on this video for hours. All right. So um, first the first section i will say of these credits is really kind of cash payment incentives or cash rebates um, more like subsidies so not really tax credits but certainly um you know should be included in this whole tax incentive and credit conversation um they have the excuse me um they have the oklahoma quality jobs program which we've already kind of talked about 
they have cash payment incentives available to veterans. Um, they have available to adding quality jobs, which I'm assuming is higher paying jobs. They have one just for small employers, right? So if you're a small employer, there's one just targeted toward you. Um, they have additional credits on top of that if you're a small employer in certain industries, okay? So you wanna be looking at that. Um, they have automatic areas, they call them, where you can get 5% rebates on compensation that you're paying people just for being in a certain area, okay? So there's a map that you can look at for that. They have, uh, let's see, the 21st century quality jobs, we just kind of talked about that. Um, and they have the Oklahoma uh, Quality Events Program. So if you're doing events in Oklahoma or you're coming from out of state to do events, they have incentives for that as well in the form of cash payments, cash incentives. The next section they, that I'll, I'll, I'll call this one the, uh, let's see, Economic uh, Development and Infrastructure Funding Area. This is really... Um, kind of along lines of more business expansion. And so they have a business expansion incentive program. And a lot of this is around like pooled finances. And so they have like different grant areas, uh, loans, things like that. It's almost like an SBA um, for businesses in the state of Oklahoma. SBA is a federal agency, small business administration. So they have a whole area in there and there's a lot of detail. They have tax exemptions and credits related to this. So if you're looking to expand your business, and not just kind of maintain status quo. This is an area that I would definitely look in and start asking questions about. Um, they have another section that is really tax exemptions and credits, which I would call more of an ad valorem kind of area. Ad valorem means that it's based on the value of the assets. So it's kind of like, you know, a lot of property taxes are like that with their ad valorem where it has, you know, it has everything to do with how much your, um, you know, real, let's say your house, right? There's a property tax in your house and it has to do with the value of the house, right? There's a millage rate and all that stuff. Ad valorem basically means whatever the value is, that's kind of the tax base we're going to use. Um, so they have exemptions for computer services and data processing uh, activities. They have an exemption for warehousing and distribution facilities. They have an exemption for automotive industries, which we talked about a little bit Earlier, um, they have different types of inventory that are exempt from ad valorem taxes. So you want to find out if your inventory, if it applies to you, is exempt or not. They have a lot of different exemptions if you're in agricultural type businesses. Um, they also have one on intangible property, which is like patents, uh, anything that's uh, uh, intellectual property. Um, could be goodwill. They have aircraft man they have one for the aircraft manufacturing industry and then they have one that's sort of like local incentives so they have like a map that shows you different geographic areas where you can get ad, ad valorem exemptions ad valorem relief um they have one that you can get for adding new jobs um they have one for quality jobs and uh we talked about this one a little earlier but they have one for you know if you're employing hiring native americans uh, or people that would qualify as having a Native American heritage. Okay, um, now we have one that th this area is, and we talked about a li little bit about this before in general, but it's really targeted towards engineers, right? So the entire state has decided to target and incentivize, rebate engineers working in the state, okay? So again, like we talked about, they have, uh, they they've specifically targeted the aerospace industry, the automotive industry, they have individual tax credits, company tax credits. They have a tax credit for tuition. Um, again, they have an, another one for the software and cybersecurity. They have a zero emission facilities tax credit. They have an insurance premium tax credit. They have one for clean burning motor vehicles. They have another credit for uh, electric vehicles. They have another credit for natural gas refueling stations. They have one for ethanol uh, fuel. They have one for tourism. They have one for film uh Film and entertainment industries, which we've talked about in lots of other states. Um, that's a big one. That's a big popular one, uh, film and entertainment uh, industry. Um, let's see. They also have has a whole other section that's just for investors. Okay. So they have um, in, people that are investing in technology, um, people that are investing in Oklahoma issue like municipal bonds, um, and one for historic rehabilitation. They have tax credits for investors in all those areas. 
they have a whole section for credits and exemptions for entrepreneurs, okay? That's pretty cool, right? That's what we are, a lot of us uh, that are watching this. They have it for new products development. They have it for an incub incubator site tenancy. So like if you are creating um, different uh, sites for entrepreneurs to gather, um, could be like some of those uh, like shared office kind of spaces. If you're in that kind of business, they're tax credits for you. And then they have the work opportunity tax credit program, which is they're, they're stating this in their incentives. It's really more of a federal incentive. It's not really a state incentive, but they're listing it in their, um, their group of benefits, but that's really a federal incentive. But that, you know, entrepreneurs should be getting that if you're creating jobs for sure. And a lot of these you want to be double dipping on, right? So if you're creating jobs, don't just get one credit or incentive. See, you know, get all of them that you're uh, entitled to get. It might be cash rebate. It could be exemption. It could be uh, other types of economic incentives. It could be tax credits, right? So double dip on these things and stack them up on top of each other. Get every single one you qualify for and stack them up until you can get mitigated on your taxes as much as you can and get the biggest tax rebate you can get for the longest period of time. Okay, not tax rebate, sorry, cash rebate. Uh, let's see, sales tax exemptions. They have one for manufacturers, one's for computer services and data processing, aircraft, uh, telecommunications, spaceport. I'm not sure what spaceport is, but if you're in it, you probably do. Um, they have, again, computer services, data processing, telecommunications equipment, construction materials, all of these are have sales tax refund or exemption benefits. Um, another section they have is transportation and distribution. They have incentives and benefits if you're building industrial access roads, if you're registering trucks, uh, and if you're operating in foreign trade zones. Um, let's see, they also have some big financial assistance programs there, which is not really tax incentives and tax credits, but nonetheless still relevant uh, to what we're talking about here. Let's see, they have a lot of, a lot of different uh, incentives if you were to invest in bonds that are issued in Oklahoma. Um, let's see, they have, looks like they have financing available for if you're going to be generating and earning tax credits and some activity, they can finance those tax credits in advance so even before you earn them they'll kind of let you uh, it's almost like getting a paycheck early and then working it off like if, if they know you're gonna get a million dollars in tax credits there's financing programs to give you that million dollars up front right so you can get going on the project um, so not a grant but it's a loan but it's also nice to get that in advance because otherwise it'd be a credit you never get right because you don't have the money to do it in the first place uh, let's see they have financing available for paying sales taxes um, they have ones that are just targeted for small businesses. Um, they have small business loan guarantees, right? So SBA federally does a lot of great loan guarantees. The state of Oklahoma is now saying that they're going to do that as well um, from just the state. So you might be able to double dip on some of that stuff, all right? So that's pretty, that's not typical. I mean, some states do that, but it's a handful, okay? Not a lot. Oklahoma does. Um, let's see. There's financial assistance specific to the technology industry. So they do something where they actually facilitate technology partnerships, um, which I think is more like an incubator type service, a free service. Uh, they do, a, they do uh, financing for innovation. So like innovative process, innovative projects that involve technology and R and D, right? So if you're doing R and D in that area or, or other innovative type projects, they're going to give you some financial assistance some financial help there. Um, let's see, they have something called, they have a whole section on investment programs. You know, they have some different incentives where uh, in a local market, if you're going to be investing in it and building things to make it uh, a very business friendly climate, uh, very supportive of business. I mean, a lot of times people will put together town centers and things like that to really support commerce, right? And so they have uh, assistance for that. That's not necessarily atypical for states where have lots of rural areas, right, um, to try to promote development of different areas of commerce, right, where there's just lots of land to try to really incentivize real estate development. Um, let's see, they've got workforce assistance programs, um, gosh, and this is a lot for going to be more for like individuals, but it could be people you're employing too. It, they have advanced degree programs, they have something called the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, WIOA. Uh, which is more for using people in a kind of, you know, in, in innovative projects or in innovative ways. Um, 
let's see, they have workers' compensation insurance programs to subsidize that because that's an expensive cost, obviously. They have opportunities for training, so they have tra training for industry program, which they call TIP. They have customized industry training programs, industrial safety training programs, all of these. They have economic incentives and tax credits around. Um, let's see, they have... Yeah. They, they, they do have some assistance with like business filing fees. I don't think that's a big a big deal necessarily, but might be something you want to look into if you're paying big business filing fees. Um, let's see. Oh, they also have some enterprise zones. So in uh, you know federal, there is something called um, uh, qualified opportunity zones where again, this is like these areas where they where want to bring them from po uh, poverty to prosperity. And um, they're, they're very geographic, right? So they have maps where they show you, okay, we're gonna be in this area, and, or we have these dis different designated areas, and if you're doing activity in here, you're investing and you're spending money here, we're gonna give you special subsidies, special economic incentives, tax credits, et cetera, et cetera, to do, do things here. So, you know, and again, these are, these are places you could double dip and stuff where you can say, oh, okay, I'm in, uh, I'm in the software industry or, or I'm in the tech industry. I'm going to put a data center in an opportunity zone and I'm going to hire people at this rate and I'm going to get credit, 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 cash rebate, financing, you know, and you can start to stack these economic incentives on top of each other. So if you're really smart, you can hold a whole hand of cards with economic incentives uh, and, and you may end up paying no tax and getting cash rebates on top of it. Okay. So, um, that's how you can kind of do this strategically, right? And I would say if you are in Oklahoma and you're not aware of some of the things I'm talking about and you are not taking advantage of some of these programs in Oklahoma, you, you need to. You need to ask some questions. If you want to talk to us, let us know. We'll talk to you. But talk to your tax professional. Talk to your attorney. Talk to uh, whoever your trust advisor might be and you know, find out what's going on. I mean, if I was in business in Oklahoma... Um, I mean, I do have clients in Oklahoma, but if I was domiciled in Oklahoma, I would be taking advantage of a ton of these. I would be paying no Oklahoma tax, totally legally, and I would be getting economic rebates, uh, or sorry, cash rebates on top of it. So basically, I would not be paying tax, and I would be taking payment from the state of Oklahoma to do business in Oklahoma, okay? That would not be hard the way they've set this up. Okay, so if you're not doing that, then you need to spend some time looking at this and looking at what you might not be getting and taking advantage of. A lot of people take take advantage of federal credits. Um, a lot of people don't, <laughs> but the percentage that do take advantage of federal credits a lot, I don't see a lot of people taking advantage of the state credits they should be. That's why I'm doing this video series. There's not a lot of awareness out there in states like Oklahoma, you have got to be getting these credits. If we were talking about Florida or Texas or Wyoming or something like that, then they have a few different programs and it's not that big a deal. Uh, it's kind of niche, but certain people qualify, not a lot of people do. That's not Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, it's kind of like Iowa, kind of like South Carolina. We talked about those earlier. You have got to be looking at these and taking advantage of these credits. This is a ton of money. And some of these credits go on for 10 years, okay? So you slap them onto your payroll system and bam, you're getting credits for 10 years, okay? This is big money. You need to be doing this, especially if you're in manufacturing distribution. Very tough, very competitive industry. Every percentage of margin matters. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then retaining people matters. I mean, gosh, I mean, getting people credits for the workforce and whatnot. I mean, you want to retain people, have a great tax credit program set up for them to get tax credits. So, and, and you can pay them the same that your competitors are paying them, but really they're getting more because you're just taking advantage of some of this free stuff so that they're, they're better off working for you than they are your competitors. You're gonna crush your competitors. Everything you can do to get a competitive advantage, you should be doing, okay? And this is free. This is just low-hanging fruit, all right? Okay, so with that, I've gone over 20 minutes. I'm still under 30, so I'm gonna cut it here. Um, again, if you're in Oklahoma, please call us if you wanna talk about this, because this is the kind of stuff we can really sink our teeth into. There's a lot of meat on the bone here. We would love to help different people in Oklahoma uh, to, to, to monetize all this stuff. This would be a great project for us as tax professionals uh, and as business enthusiasts, okay? All right, thank you so much. And uh, hopefully this video will help you get some money. All right, thanks.